everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Today I'm going to give you an introduction to Baroque ornamentation. Now this is a big topic and when you're first getting into it, it can feel quite overwhelming. How do you play it? Where should you do it? What do all those little symbols mean? So I'm going to try and break it down for you step by step so that you feel more confident in tackling it in your music. Now I found out when I was researching this video that Baroque ornamentation is a rabbit hole of information. Understandably I can't include everything in this video so I've selected the things I think are really useful to start with. If I've missed something out that you'd like to share please do so in the comments. This video is also brought to you by Vialma, which is an app and streaming service for classical and jazz music. What I really like is that it breaks down its composers into like very famous, quite famous and still to discover. So you can find out a lot of new music and you can choose your subscription in different tiers and you can choose to also get things like articles and videos and background information on the music that you listen to. And I've also been curating some playlists with them. So later on in the video, I'll tell you about this week's playlist. So Baroque ornamentation, what is that? Ornamentation was basically the practice of embellishing music by adding extra notes and little figures and this was done in a very specific style. And also at this time the line between composers and performers was a lot more blurred. Composers would perform their own music, performers would improvise their own ornaments, everyone was kind of in there getting creative. And why would people ornament their music apart from it just being part of the style? Well, it could make it very expressive, it could add an extra dimension to the music. Um, if the music had repeats, that happens a lot in Baroque music, it can add variety. And to be honest, it was also a way for the performer to show off their skills and talents. We can divide ornamentation roughly into two camps. You've got the passaggi and you've got the graces. Passaggi was where you would take a simpler melody line such as and embellish it with lots of extra notes. And graces were more like individual ornaments each tied to a specific note. So this line will become and today just so we know I'm going to be concentrating much more on graces and we're talking in the high baroque period there we go the thing that complicates all of this is that baroque ornamentation differs a lot the way ornaments were played would vary from region to region in different time periods even composers would contradict themselves so please bear in mind nothing i say today is absolute there will be examples where it's the exact opposite of what i'm saying um, i'm just kind of giving you a more general idea to get started regional style was really important in this period you have the italian baroque which is a lot more virtuosic and florid and they used a lot more of the passaggi and on the other side you had the french which was much more re refined and intricate The French were much less into improvisation, they liked their music to be quite set, uh, you had to basically do what you're told. The advantage of this is that they invented loads of symbols and loads of books explaining these symbols to make sure that the music was preserved and that is really things that we can use today so I'll get into that later. You also had German Baroque which was a bit of a combination of these styles, they called it les goûts réunis which was the good taste. You also had English Baroque which was a little bit weird and today I'm trying to give a general introduction so I'll touch on all of these. 
Ornamentation had three musical purposes. I would say the most important of these was harmonic. In the Baroque, we really like to play with consonants, where the notes fit together, and dissonance, that's where they clash. Imagine you've got your chord sequence underneath, you've got your accompaniment, and the note fits very nicely. We can create tension by adding a trill. Basically, every time your fingers hit, we have this moment of ugh, and by going between them, you have like ugh, ha, ugh, ah, ugh, and that's baroque music. The second musical effect is melodic. This was really in the passage. For example, you could have a boring. Or a fun, interesting, and cool. There are many people who can improvise great passage, I'm apparently not one of them. And the third musical effect was, of course, rhythmic. You could add a lot of excitement to a dance movement, for example. Okay, when would you use an ornament? Now, a lot of books from that time talked a lot about good taste and moderation. We can infer that there are a lot of players using ornaments all over the shop and basically kind of over-egging the pudding. Is that a phrase? So let's say for now, less is more. There are some places where you always use an ornament. For example, at a cadence, the end of a phrase, you would always use a trill. You would never end a phrase with but rather you would also use ornaments in repetitions this could be a repetition of a whole section uh, baroque music was full of repeats you play this first section much more clean and then you could go to town on the second section and you would also see repetition in the form of sequences this is a little section of music that keeps repeating moving up or down one note each time for example You can make each subsequent one a little bit more exciting. And you would also put um, an ornament at a point where you would want to express something, express despair or longing or love or excitement. And here's the thing, when knowing when to put your ornaments, of course you can follow the ones written on the page, but it's really important to understand the structure of the piece. Um, understand what the harmony is doing underneath. You don't want to be putting your ornaments willy-nilly, you want them to be in places where it's going to have effect and you want to be able to build it up through the piece. Right, are you still with me? Now we're going to hone in on the ornaments themselves. I am going to demonstrate a bunch of ornaments that we use in Baroque music, also with how they were written down. The fun thing is that as Baroque music was spread across Europe, you've got the names of the ornaments in different languages. They had different symbols for notating them, but I'm gonna do my best to try and consolidate this. Ugh. And also please forgive my British accent when pronouncing all of these French and Italian things. I do speak Dutch, but that's not really very helpful. The first is the appoggiatura, notated with a small note slurred to a big note. The purpose of this was harmonic, you'd start off with a note that didn't fit with the chord and then you go to a note that did, so dissonance, consonance. Because you want to emphasise the dissonance, it's always started on the beat and the amount of time the appoggiatura takes is roughly half the note, but you can pull it around depending on your own expression. In French music this was also called a pot de voix, when it was going up and called a coulet or a coulement when it was going down. And you also had the pot de voix doublé, which was on two notes. The next step from this was the trill, also sometimes called a shake. Trills have three rules. They consist of two notes. You start on the upper note and you start on the beat. If you 
melody is going down after the trill, you can end it with a rhyming point. The extra dun dun. If the melody is going up, you could use a tourne or a turn. Da, da, da. I think trills are definitely the most common Baroque ornament and it's the one I would suggest starting off with. It's the one that we see in all different uh, styles. Next we have the mordant, also sometimes called a beat or in French music a battement. It's notated either with a zigzag or a straight line and it's basically Sometimes you have a mordant that's a zigzag line and that means going up and with a line through it, it means going down. Then we have the turn or the tour de gossier, which is this kind of S on its side. This was like a little turning figure between two notes and going towards the second note. So becomes and we've already seen it in conjunction with a trill, becomes. We have the accent, which was like a little lift between repeating notes. You have the tour de chant, which was a very melodic um, ornament. It's three notes, up, down, up, going towards a trill. And then another Baroque ornament, which is a whole thing on its own, is of course vibrato. Um, this could be done with your air, or with your finger, and this was called flattement in French Baroque. Most of the time flattement finger vibrato was not notated, you'd just do it for expression on long notes. In some French music though, they did use this symbol. So those are a bunch of the ornaments that you will encounter. I'm going to play a few little um, examples for you now. We're going to start off with Mr. Hotter, a French composer, and we have some appoggiaturas, we have some accents, we have a pot de foie, and we have a trill. Next we have Couperin, a French composer with battements, trills and appoggiaturas. Oh, there is so much and from now on the best thing you can do is Play, 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 and listen, listen, listen. In order to really get into a style, you have to understand how it sounds. Um, here I've put a big list of composers that you should go and check out, depending on the kind of uh, music that you want to get into. And to whet your appetite, I have put together a playlist over at Vialma, this uh, streaming service, with a whole bunch of this Baroque music that I think is good to listen to. So check that out, link in the description. And there are a lot of resources that you can get into that are really going to help you on your Baroque ornamentation journey. The most useful for me has been the Baroque Ornamentation Tutor by Janos Bali. This book is incredible. Aside from a whole bunch of useful information in the beginning, this book contains no less than 40 complete pieces in all different Baroque styles to try it out with, as well as some appendices that give you a whole bunch of different ideas of how to ornament different passages. Another one that I've really enjoyed is The Grammar of Ornaments by Eric Haas. He gives a really good clear introduction and explanation of ornaments and what he actually does is collect all different ways of ornamenting something, for example with the skeletal melody, chord tones, rhythmic variations, as well as a few pieces to practice it with. And if you're really getting serious about French music, there is the indispensable tome Interpretation of French Music by Betty Bang Mather. It's also really worth getting into some primary sources, that means books and music from the time 
time, you have On Playing the Flute by Mr. Quance. This has really detailed descriptions of how they would have played ornaments at that time, more in the kind of German style. And if you're getting into French music, you have the book uh, The Principles of the Flute by Mr. Hotter. Here he talks a bit about ornamentation. And some music to start you off. In the general, more Baroque German style, you have... Ugh. The Telemann Methodical Sonatas. 12 sonatas, in each one there's a movement where he shows a simple melody line and an ornamented one, how he would do it, to show all different ways of ornamenting. Really valuable information. For French music, I would go with Hotter's, um The Art of Prelude, where he gives, gives, where he gives small, they're called preludes and traits, little pieces in all keys where he demonstrates all different types of ornaments. And for exciting, virtuosic Italian music, you can't go wrong with Corelli, who seems to be having a competition of how many notes he could fit in one bar. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that is so much information. I am exhausted. So this was my vast introduction to this vast topic, but I hope it was helpful. I know I've missed a lot out, but if you have questions, please leave them below. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. Over here is a link to the Team Recorder Patreon where you can support the channel. And up here, I've made a video that goes much more in depth into trills. Thank you for watching and have a great day.